And good morning, good morning everybody. everybody. Welcome, welcome to Bat Shalom, Shalom. Shalom to all of you. Welcome to Mishkan David Messianic Congregation. It's a little bit wet. It's a little too much. Yeah. This is you. I've got reverb, but I also have echo. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. Much better. Thank you. That'll do it. Welcome to Mishkan David Messianic Congregation. My name is Esther Simkin. I'm the Rebetzin and Praise and Worship Leader here. My husband is Messianic Rabbi Gabriel Simkin, and I'm glad you've joined us for a regular Shabbat service. Last night, our, our service was a little bit unusual. Uh, we were celebrating Purim. I'm not going to get into a long explanation. If you've never seen a Purim celebration, I would just encourage you to Google it. <laughs> but uh, it was a lovely night, and we all had a wonderful, wonderful time, and certainly a time, yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was a night of mayhem and hilarity, all at the same time. Um, our services are normally on Friday night at 7.30 p.m., Saturday morning at 11 a.m., and uh, the two services are not alike, so we would encourage you to please attend both services so you don't miss out on everything. And uh, what can I tell you about this congregation? It's a congregation of Jewish and non-Jewish people who have realized that Yeshua, that Jesus is the promised Messiah to Israel. I'm pinging. I'm pinging. Yeah. Uh, that Yeshua is the promised Messiah to Israel. And we're getting together in congregations like this. This is happening all over the world to celebrate um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to worship him in spirit and in truth, and to follow the teachings of our uh, Messiah, Messiah Yeshua, the promised one. The prophet said that when Messiah would come, he would teach us how to walk in Torah. And Yeshua, Jesus, did exactly that. He began to teach us how to walk in righteousness, how these ordinances work in day-to-day -day living, in our, in our behavior and in our actions towards others and in the way we live our lives. And ultimately showing us that righteousness begins in the heart, inside, from the inside out. And that's how we're changed. And uh, if you do things the way he said it, um, as Rabbi Gabe and I can certainly attest, your life will definitely change for the better. So we would certainly encourage you to, um, to uh, walk in his footsteps. Um, I would also encourage everybody to stand. This is not a difficult walk. The Messiah said that it's simply a matter of keeping two commandments, loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all your soul, and loving your neighbor as yourself. He said that on these two commandments hang all the Torah and the prophets. Right now we're going to listen to our friend Jeremiah. He's going to play the call to worship on the shofar, a very important sound, a reminder that Shabbat is a very special day. We're, I'm pinging again. The, that Shabbat is a very special day of the week and, um, and that the Lord sanctified this day. He made it holy. He rested on this day and commanded us to rest as well. So uh, it's about fellowship, fellowshipping with our Heavenly Father and fellowshipping with one another. And as we listen to the sound of the shofar, let us remember that without Messiah Yeshua, there is no Shabbat Shalom because he is the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. This is the first and great commandment, and the second one is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the Torah and the Oh, 
Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who separates the holy from the profane, who makes the Shabbat a delight, a sweet and delightful day, to rejoice in your presence, to make music, and to worship you with all of our heart, mind, and souls. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us a day of rest from our labors, from our own works, from ceasing from our own works, so we can abide in your presence and understand fullness of joy. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, who sent the Messiah, Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, to teach us how to walk in righteousness and to help us remember every day of our lives that true righteousness begins in our heart. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who will send the Messiah again very, very soon, and he'll take his place on the throne, on his rightful place on the throne of David in Jerusalem, and at long last we will enjoy the millennial kingdom, a time when all will be Shabbat, and where at long last we will enjoy peace on earth, true peace on earth, and goodwill to all men. As we enter into your courts with thanksgiving and with praise, we remember what King David said. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Come before him with thanksgiving and give him praise. Praise you, we thank you, Lord. Here we go. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise. And give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise. Your voice is raised. Give glory.
He's got, he's got to get that poop poop a doop in there. <laughs> Praise you. We thank you, Lord. King Daniel, the, uh, Daniel, uh, the prophet said, he wrote, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. This was the vision that he had. The ancient of days did sit whose garment like was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. And there was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom shall never be destroyed. Blessing, honor, glory, power be unto the ancient of days.
My soul, our soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation, King David said, is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my Yeshua. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for all of us. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that the power belongs to God. My soul finds rest in you, in God alone, God alone, salvation comes from you, from God alone, God alone, you are my rock, my refuge, I will not be Like thunder rolls, cover the sea, surely like lightning strikes, your power revealed, darkness defeated, you are my light and salvation, my soul will trust in Roger, I need more juice on the piano. I need more. I, I'm not getting any juice. I need more in the monitor.
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. He did. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. I didn't do that. Elohim and God, we will glory all day long. In your name, O oh Lord, we are going to praise forever and ever.
Messiah Yeshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you.
your heart, mind, soul. Turn to someone now with somebody at Shabbat Shalom and help somebody feel really, really welcome here, okay?
is good to praise the Lord. It is good. It is good. Good, 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 good. That doesn't sound too good. That don't sound good at all. I don't know. What happened? Oh, it's pinging, dinging, ringing. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. You need, you need, you need to up the volume. Down on the gain, up on the volume. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Ugly. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Buckle your shoe. One, two, one, two, pinging. One, two. The animal noises sounded pretty good last night. Ooh, it's bad. Ooh, it's bad. Better? One, two. Need more volume? One, two, 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 one, two. Pinging. One, two, one, two, one, two. Buckle your shoe. One, two. One, two. Can you give me a little more volume on this one, please? One, two. That's better. That's much better. Anyway, we're working on the sound system, as you can plainly see, and uh, having a little bit of technical difficulties. We got new stuff, and uh, some of the old stuff blew up. Some of the new stuff, we're working out the bugs. Can you give me a little bit more uh, volume on this one, please? One, two. One, two. Yeah, so I don't have to. Thank you. It's, it's pinging, though. It's this one, yeah. Yeah, it's on the one, two. Not bad? Not great, either. All right, I quit. Let's eat. Hallelujah. One, two. One, two. All right, that's better. Anyway, anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Please pray for our sound system. Even last night, the internet was down. I think the adversary is getting really mad at this place. He don't like what's going on here. We're like too much Yeshua. Maybe we should talk more about money and prosperity and how to be rich in Jesus. I think the devil will leave us alone if we talk about money. But when you talk about the Holy Spirit and you talk about walking in God and being in the anointing and in the power of God, the adversary is very angry. He is anti, he is anti Christ. Christ, the word for Christ is anointed. He is anti anointing. He is anti the anointing. How many people are anointed here today? You're born again. Now, do you think he wants you and I to walk in the anointing? He is anti anointing. So any message that would distract us from the anointing that is in us and with us, that's what he wants. When we talk about walking in the power of God and walking in the anointing, he hates that. He is anti-anointing. You know why? Because he ain't got any. His anointing was taken away. His glory was taken away. He lost it. He was kicked out of heaven. He is the prince of darkness now. He only comes to steal. What's he want to steal? Your money? He wants your anointing. He wants the, the, the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you to connect with the Holy Spirit. That's what we're studying today in the Torah, by the way, which we'll get to in a minute, but I'm happier now that I, I can hear myself. Uh, Mitch was here last night. How many people were here last night? We had a wonderful time. We had a wild time. Mitch, Mitch is a worldwide evangelist. He's been all over the world. He's been in ministry for years, I think 40 years. He was here last night. He's here from Pennsylvania. He came in his bathrobe, dressed in his bathrobe. I, I, I don't think he's going to be wearing his bathrobe, but he's, he's going to lead a group of volunteers. Um, we said Monday, but then I spoke to him afterwards. He goes, can we change it to Sunday? Because some people work on Monday, and he didn't want to do it too late, and it was going to be dark. So we've changed it. If you're interested in going out and preaching the gospel with a professional, I mean, you know, people can learn stuff. 
there's a five-fold ministry, according to Scripture, and some people are evangelists, and it's not that the evangelists do all the work. The evangelists are supposed to teach you and I how to evangelize. And that's his ministry. That's his, his calling on how to teach you and I to reach people for Yeshua. And if you're anointed, how many people want to reach people for the, for the Lord? And so God has sent Mitch here to, to share with us, to encourage us, to, to, to share what he's learned over the years on how to reach people for Yeshua. And so he's, he's volunteered. He's going to be here tomorrow, Sunday, the, whoever wants to volunteer at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Not Monday. We said Monday before. That's canceled. It's tomorrow. If you want to go out with Mitch and watch him, you don't have to do it. You can just learn. You can participate. If you just want to go uh, with him uh, as a volunteer, and that's going to be tomorrow here. Uh, where the group's going to meet Sunday. How many people are wanting to go tomorrow at 3 p.m.? How many people have the time? We got a few hands up. Okay, so meet here tomorrow, Sunday at 3 p.m. Mitch will be here. And then uh, maybe you can help him figure out where to go here where there's some people and you won't get thrown out. He said malls, malls, they don't let you do that? They don't let you share the gospel in malls? The mall cops throw you out? But he was talking about going to the beach somewhere and, and, and sharing somewhere on the beach. So 3 p.m. tomorrow if you wish to volunteer. And uh, Mitch will be here. Bless his heart. And if you're not here, pray for, pray for him. Pray for them. Pray for those that will be here tomorrow at, at 3 p.m. And uh, keep them in your prayers. Israel update. Um, they're talking about opening up Israel completely uh, next month in March. They've already started opening up. I believe the airport's going to open up. We've made a tentative, are going to make a tentative reservation for June. We have the dates already. And that's going to be, we're going to be leaving June 13th which is a Sunday. We're going to be flying American Airlines. And we're coming back. Oh, because your husband works for American Airlines. That's why. That's why we're going on American Airlines. You silly girl. June 13th, Sunday. And we'll be back on the 24th. And early in the morning. And both the direct flights. Uh, Miami, Tel Aviv. I don't have the prices for the hotels now because we just got the dates. And I said tentative. We don't know what the requirements are going to be for travel as far as vaccine or being tested. It's probably going to be 72-hour uh, COVID test before you go, probably. Um, I don't think they can, they can uh, uh, make people take the vaccine if you're, if you're not taking the vaccine. But you're probably going to have to be tested for corona or COVID before the trip. You can count on that. And uh, also recommend travel insurance, just in case. You, we cannot go for whatever reason. You test positive, you can't go. Somebody asked me about that. Okay, they asked you. Uh, there are many travel insurance, travel agents, travel, in, uh, travel trip insurance, it's called. Many it's trip insurance. I checked it out. It's like 200 bucks for the whole trip. So it's not a lot of money, and it's full refund. So if you if you uh, if you're concerned that you may not go at the last minute, now if the trip is canceled, of course you don't need insurance. If we don't go, we don't pay. And uh, but for some reason, if you do test positive, and you cannot go, I recommend insurance. And it's about two hundred and change for the whole trip. Uh, the trip's going to be probably three thousand and something. Still, we'll find out because I think June is more of a um, busy time, so the rates may be higher for the hotels. I'm not sure. We'll find out. We'll get the prices. But those are the tentative dates, June, t June 13th to the 24th, for those of you that are still interested in going. And uh, dance class, uh, Arlene, I think, has been canceled. Where's, where's Claudia? What did Claudia say? The what? Claudia went to get food, and Arlene is sick. Yeah, she, we're, we're canceling that prayer. I know you have it on the notes here. Next week, there won't, Arlene, Arlene won't be here. Pray for her. I mean, she's now ministering and dance all over, and guess who is bothering her? Mr. D. Evil, as usual. 
That's when, that's when you know you're doing the right thing. When he bothers. He walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may. You know, I remember just, it reminds, it reminds me. When I first became a believer and I was still studying the Bible and keeping to myself and I wasn't sharing with anyone, the devil left me alone. As soon as I opened my mouth, I remember, and I started sharing about Yeshua with family members and friends, I remember this as clear as day, um, 30 years ago, or 30 some odd, more than 30 years. I've been a believer so long, I forgot how long I've been a believer. But over 30 years ago, as soon as I opened my mouth and I started sharing about Yeshua with other people, all hell broke loose in my life. And I could not understand, like, what is going on? But then I realized he's not happy with the message. So if you keep your mouth shut, he's happy, the adversary. And if you open your mouth, the adversary will be very angry at you. But I don't care. Let him, you know, let him take a long walk on a short pier. Or, uh, or as Yeshua said, get thee behind me. But anyway, so if you do open your mouth for Yeshua, you may catch a little heat. But no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Yeshua has given us power over all the power of the enemy to tread on scorpions and serpents. And, and, and Yeshua said, nothing by any means shall hurt you. And uh, he's like a barking dog that doesn't bite. But he does talk up a storm, the little turkey. Anyway, Passover coming up. We are, we, are, we are going to do Passover the night before Passover because it's on a Friday night. So everyone can be here and we can do a Friday night. So like we did with Purim last night. We actually did it on the day of Purim and we celebrated Purim last night. We had a wonderful time. Amen? Did you notice there was a full moon? You know what that means? Rosh Chodesh, new moon. Or full moon, no. Rosh Chodesh is new moon. It was a full moon. Whatever, we're, God's calendar is, on, is a moon calendar. It's not a solar calendar. calendar. But anyway, so we're going to do Pesach. When are we going to do Pesach? We're going to do Pesach on the 13th of Nisan, March 26th, Friday night. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up the, 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 the uh, Passover table here up, up on top. We'll have, we'll have my wife and I and, and probably Tom and Claudia sitting up here with us. Roger, right? Like we always do. And everyone will be sitting here. We're not going to put the tables out. We'll do the Lord's Supper when it says. We'll read through the whole Haggadah, and then we'll eat on this side of the room so we don't have to get the whole room upset. Are you with me? Then we'll have the matzahs, and that night we'll start. We'll start a day early with no leaven. Is that okay? An extra day with no leaven? I, I've noticed that when you don't eat leaven, less bloating. If you eat matzahs, less, you don't get that pregnant feeling bread pregnant, but anyway, so that's going to that's gonna be Pesach, and that's how we're going to do it on March 26th. It'll be a Friday night service. It'll be part of our service. will be the Passover celebration, and we'll be telling the whole story. We'll read through the whole Haggadah. We won't break for dinner in the middle of the Haggadah. We'll finish the whole Haggadah. We'll do the Lord's Supper at the time when it's in, in the Haggadah, and then, like as I said, we'll finish, and we'll have dinner on the a fellowship side of the room, and so we look forward to that. And uh, what else? Am I missing anything? Oh yes, Tabernáculo de David, the Tabernacle of David, and Español, uh, Messianic minister Mauricio, uh, doing wonderful. Almost forty people or more, because people are a few people in Español. So if you know somebody in Español that would like to join, please see Mauricio. He will give he will give you the contact information in order to get into the Zoom. It's a Zoom meeting, so you can zoom in. Uh, you need to see Mauricio. Mauricio, can you raise your hand? Look in the back there. You see a, a, a man, pink shirt. You're wearing a pink shirt. And, he, and, and, and see Mauricio. And uh, praise God. I hear it's going very well. That's Thursday nights, 8 p.m. till 9.30. It's an hour and a half. And, and it's open discussion too, right? There's teaching and there's open discussion in Espanol. Wonderful. And like I said, I hear it's really going well and it's, and it's blessed. So praise God for that. And uh, that's it, right? How many people love the Word of God? The entire Word of God, if you don't mind standing up as we honor the Lord. And Trevor, Mr. Trevor, 
Come forward, please. You're going to carry the Torah. And share a testimony. Mika Mocha, the song that we are singing is the song that the children of Israel sang when they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. It is found in the book of Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11. Hebrew, Mika Mocha, English, who was like thee, O Lord? And of course the answer is there is none else. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. For the Torah, the law, was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yeshua HaMashiach. Baruch Hashem, blessed be His holy name. Baruch Haba Bashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And when the ark was removed, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate you flee from you. And the 70 disciples of Yeshua returned, saying, Lord, even the unclean spirits are subject unto us through your holy name. Arise, O Lord, here this morning. Let your enemies be scattered. Let every assignment of the enemy be broken this instant. In the name of Yeshua, we command every unclean spirit out of this place, every sickness, every disease, every oppression, every depression. In the name of Yeshua, command it out of this place. Father God, we are asking you to do for us what you did for the nation of Israel when you brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage. And your word declares that there was not one feeble among them. Father God, that there would not be one feeble among us. Let the lame walk. Let the blind see. Let the deaf hear. Let the lepers. Let cancer be healed in the name of Yeshua. Let arthritis be healed in the name of Yeshua. Let every disease be healed here in the name of Yeshua. And Father God, we thank you, praise you. That our names are written in heaven, that your spirit bears witness with our spirit. That we are your sons and we are your daughters. And as we rejoice in our salvation here today, we pray for, we intercede for family, for friends, for co-workers, for our neighbors. And even pray for our enemies here this morning. And Father God, that you would draw them to yourself as you have done for each and every one of us. Let them taste and see that you are good. Let them have what we have. Let them experience what we are experiencing in you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua. And Father God, as we look around this room and there are brothers and sisters 
that could not be here today for whatever reason, Father in heaven, that you would touch them wherever they are, that you would set the captives free, that you would restore spiritually, physically our brothers and our sisters, that they would be able to come to your house and they would be able to share their testimony with the family of God here, what you have done in their life. In the name of Yeshua. And Father, bless those in heaven that are watching on the internet. Bless them. Fill them with your love. Fill us with your love. Fill them with your joy. Fill us with your joy, Father, in heaven. Fill us with your shalom, your peace that surpasses all understanding. And Father God, we thank you and we praise you for every single thing that has happened in our lives to this very moment, knowing as your word declares that all things work together for the good because we love God. How many people love God here today? Because we love him, everything is working together for the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly, working together for the good because we are the called according to his purpose. Thank you, Father in heaven, for your purpose for each and every one of us to conform us together, Jew and non-Jew alike, to conform us into the image of his Son, our Messiah, our Lord, our Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In his name we pray here this morning, the name above every name, according to the word, Yeshua HaMashiach. Can we say Yeshua together? Are we gathered in his name? Matthew 18 and 20, the Lord said, where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, there am I in the midst of them. Is he here because we are gathered in his name? And in his name we pray here today. And the people of God said, amen, amen. amen. Shabbat shalom. Please remain standing. We're going to bless the Lord for giving us all of his word. Trevor, just have a little, a little space right there. We'll call you up in a minute to read. Thank you. We're going we're gonna to bless the Lord for giving us all of his word from Genesis to Revelation. That is the miracle of a Messianic congregation, is that we believe in the entire counsel, the entire word of God, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we study the old ways, not to walk backwards in the old ways. In case people tell you, why are you here and why are you studying the old ways? We're studying the old ways to learn much better the new way of walking. We learn much better how to walk in the new way. Because the people that are asking us, why are, we, why are we studying the old way? Many of them are walking in the old way and not getting the results that we should get under the Brit Kadasha, under the new covenant. And that's why we learn. We learn the difference. How many people have learned the difference between the old and the new because of we're studying the entire word of God. And we don't want to fall into the same problems as the old covenant. Which covenant they break? Although I was a husband to them. So how, many, how, many, how many believe that God is a covenant keeping God? So he's never the problem. We're the problem. What happens when we keep covenant with God? It works. You get healed. You get restored. How many people have been healed here in this congregation? How many people are being restored? How many people are being set free? And the Yeshua said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Hamborach leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamborach leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Amen. And we said together, please, bless, bless the Lord, Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed, blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from among all peoples, given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. We have a new and better covenant as we do the new covenant blessing. First in Hebrew, then in English together, please. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natalanu Mashiach Yeshua vehadib ro shalabrit kadoshah Baruch atah Adonai 
No tain, habri, kadasha. Amen. And we said, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Please give the Lord a big hand for all of his word. From Genesis to Revelation, my lovely wife Esther is going to come up. She's going to share a few verses of this week's Torah portion. Tetzaveh. Tetzaveh, which means you are to order or command. So come up, please, Esther. And Trevor, batter up. Come on up, sir, please. Esther is going to chant a few verses in Hebrew, and Trevor is going to give us the translation in English or Jamaican, whatever you want. I call all my brothers and sisters from Jamaica Jamaicans. But anyway, um, and then he's going to share a few minutes, a couple of hours of his testimony. <laughs> if he's too long, I, I warn them. I said, you guys start booing, okay? This morning I'm going to be reading from the book of Exodus. Chapter 27, I'm going to start at verse 20, and then I'm going to read through chapter 28, verse 4. Exodus 27, 20 through 28, 4. Trevor, if you need to ch double check, this is what I'm going to be reading. Okay. Uh, and I'll be reading it, I'll be chanting it in English, and then our friend Trevor is going to be reading the translation. This is from the Parsha, entitled Tetzaveh. Beata tetzave el bene Israel, beyichu elecha shemen zayit, zach katit la maor lechalot nertamit, beochel moed michut, la baroche asher al haedut ya ochoto, aron uvanat merev. Ad boker lifne Adonai chukat olam ledorotam meet ben Yisrael veata hakreve lecha et Aaron achicha meet banav ito mitoch ben Yisrael lecha noholi Aaron nada veavihu elazah veitamar ben Yaharon. Vasita big day kodesh leharon achicha lechavod ulefi aref beatat edaber kol rachamele asher mileti ivruach kochma veasu a big day aron lechadesho lechavod noli vele habegadi. Asher Yasu Hoshe Vehot Humeir Utnonet Ashpet Mitnefet Beapnet Beasu Big Day Kodesh Leharon Achicha Ulevanar Leharon Noli Exodus Chapter 27, verse 20. And thou shalt command, command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil olive of olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always in the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. And 28 verse 4. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod, a robe and an embroidered coat, a mitre and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron and his brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me 
in this priest's office. The word of the Lord. I came to South Florida from New Jersey four years and eight months ago. And out of that period, I stopped going to church for two and a half years. I was disillusioned with the church. I've been around, you know, I've, I've had exposure to several different de denominations and I've seen a lot of things. You could classify me as one of those nomadic Christians who move from church to church for various reasons. And I concentrate on the church, the churches that I've, associate, that I've been associated with since I came to the United States. I've been in the Baptist church, independent Baptist, evangelical free church, And I've been, I've had a passing association with the Pentecostal, the Vineyard Movement, the Name It and Claim It people, the seed planting people, you know, you plant a seed and you get abundance, that kind of thing, slain in the spirit, roaring like a lion, and that kind of thing. I think the tipping point was in a Pentecostal church, they had a service one Wednesday night in which they were going to cast out a devil from my wife who was sick before she died. And someone brought a bottle of olive oil and poured it down her throat and another one came with a basin and they were carrying on, you know, and expecting that she would vomit and that would be the expulsion of the thing or the devil that was inside her. Well, that never happened. And the pastor came up to me and said, well, brother, this is not spiritual. Take your wife to the doctor for the. So I said, I've been doing that all along. I've been taking her to the doctor. There have not been any diagnosis. There were people, friends of hers, who were coming to her house and having their things going. And They were watching me out of the corner of their eyes, you know, uh, to see how I would react. Whenever people come to you, whenever you have a, you know, I believe in healing, spiritual healing, according to the scriptures. But whenever people, you have a situation and people come to you and tell you to drink this and drink that, like gungu peas leaf tea or sawasap leaf tea, Tea, uh, leaf tea or that kind of stuff, you know. Give them a second look. There is always a lot of mumbo jumbo surrounding that kind of thing. So I stayed at home. I was disillusioned with the church. I was disgusted. I was disgusted with the commercialization of the church. So I listened to BBN, listened to some good preaching, good music, and I stayed home. I knew something was missing because I believe in the, that last line in the Apostles' Creed that speaks about the communion of saints. I knew I, I wasn't having fellowship with believers. I knew from Proverbs 27, 17, I think, it's this iron sharpens iron. And the man sharpens the countenance of his friends. 
So I knew something. Like I, I didn't take communion all those two and a half years. And I'm a man who is a, a Christian who is accustomed to taking communions, communion. I used to take communion in church every month. Some people do it every quarter. And then I come here and I see communion being served every week. I remember Jesus Christ, or Yeshua, still in the old mold, you know, who tells us that as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. So, I wanted to do it as often as possible. And I come here, and it is happening every week. I said, something is different here. I was tentative when I came the first time. My neighbor and good friend, Carol, she invited me here, told, told me about church. And she didn't press me to come. She waited until I would want to come voluntarily. And soon I found that I would call her up and say, pick me up. Because, you know, my car is out of function right now, so she, I ride with her. I said, pick me up. And sometimes she's surprised. She said, I didn't know you were going to go. I said, yeah, I want to go. Something is different. Because when I came here, something hit me. It was different. As to you, you take you, you put me in a place where I think Isaiah was in your worship service. And Isaiah said, I saw the Lord on his, sitting on his throne high and lifted up. That's where I want to be before the throne of God. Because many of these places that I've been into, I go to church to worship. I, I, I like to prepare myself for worship. And I go there, and sometimes the services would morph into some political rally where there were talk preachers, and everybody were talking about their favorite politician or their favorite party. And, and it destroys my worship, my spirit. And I, I was very mad about that when I leave there sometimes. And I come here, I hear the word preach. I said, you know, Rabbi, your, your exegesis is sound. And your, ex, your expository preaching is accurate and penetrating. Gets me on my toes. That's what I want is something to keep me up because I'm not perfect yet. I have a lot to learn. I've been a Christian for 62 years and I'm still learning. I read the Bible from, cover, from Genesis to Revelation every year. I've been doing that since 1990. I still have a lot to learn. Every time I take up the scriptures and read it, I see something new. Something new pops out at me that I didn't see before. And I come into this place and the way you worship it is infectious. I, I, I sense an infectious joy an infectious passion an infectious gladness. And it, it, you know iron sharpens iron you know, gets into me too. And I want more of it. And I want more of it. And then when it comes to the question of Shabbat, I used to worship it, but I don't want to take up. That's another story. I, <laughs> I could be here for a while. Talk, you know, we talk. So I won't take 
Uh, no, I won't take up more time. You get a chance another time, probably. And we talk about Shabbat and what that means to me. Because since I've been a young boy going to church, I've been going to church every Sunday, religiously. Came to Shabbat the first time here. And I started doing some research anyway. You know, they say, and I know it, that no church is perfect. I know that. People are different. And we're all at different stages of our spiritual growth. But if I would ma make a recommendation, I would say I would love to see us emulating Romans chapter 12 from verses 3 to 21. Because I think that that is a, a synopsis of what the Christian church should be. But we have a good thing going on here. And we should keep it that way. I want to close with this reference to this hymn or this chorus. Surely, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the rush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you. just wanted to mention that uh, for Mr. Coombs, this is his bar mitzvah. So please. <laughs> Mazal tov. Congratulations. Um, and we thank the Lord for giving us the Torah, the leaves from the tree of life for the healing of the nations. And we say, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lano Torah emet Vechaye olam nata betochenu, baruch ata Adonai, noten haTorah, amen. We said, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth, implanting within us everlasting life. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah, amen. It is good to praise the Lord. I bear witness to what Trevor says, or what he said, that the presence of the Lord is in this place. That's why I've been a, a loyal member of the Mishkan for over 30 years from the time that we started, because the Lord has been here every single meeting. Don't you wish most of you could say that? But he's always here because he said where two or three are gathered in his name. He said, there am I in the midst of them. And uh, we don't teach religion because God so loved the world, he didn't send a religious person. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So we know from our Father who is in heaven the type, what He expects from each and every one of us. He wants a father-son or father-son relationship. And when, when that is established between us and Him and Him and us, it, it's as good as being in heaven. You're on your way to being in heaven. That's what heaven is all about. Our Father who is in heaven. And that's what He wants. He wants a father-son, father-daughter relationship. And that is a very special relationship. And that is not a religious relationship of any kind. And so thank you, Trevor, for sharing your testimony with us. 
because I think that's pretty much everyone's testimony that is here. We come from different backgrounds and different religious training, Jewish training, Christian. Religion comes in every size, shape, and color, but it's still religion. And there's nothing like a relationship with our Father who is in heaven. And once that is established in our lives, we'll never, I, I'm, I'm never going back. Somebody said, I'm never going back. And I'm going to fight like heaven, or I don't want to say like hell, to keep going. You need to fight hell to get there. Let's put it that way. But anyway, this week's Torah portion, I mean, we're getting into the deep things of God, in case you haven't noticed. We are now in, we're still studying in the book of Exodus. Tetzaveh means you are to command. We are reading from Exodus chapter 27, where we left off last week. Verse 20 through chapter 30 and verse 10. And then, of course, the Haftorah portion is Ezekiel 43, 10 through uh, 27. We are now getting into the Torah portion. We are now getting to the part. Last week was the building of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle in the wilderness. And we said when, after salvation, what should come after salvation? A person gets saved. You've just begun in the kingdom of God. You just found the door. Yeshua said, I'm the door. When you, you've gone in, now what? Is it over? No, that's sal after salvation. What happened to the nation of Israel is an example for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All the things that happened to them correlate with our walk with God now. And last week, God begins to teach the nation of Israel how to build a tabernacle to worship Him in the wilderness. To teach them how to worship the God that saved them. To teach them to worship who God is. Remember, I remember Moses. Who are you? We don't know who he is. We get saved. We don't know who he is. How are you going to worship a God you don't know? You need instructions. You need commandments. I mean, I, I just I I, I I I cringe when I hear pastors and teachers say you don't need commandments. You don't need to do any of the commandments of God. How the heck are you going to worship a God you don't know unless you have some kind of instructions? Come on now. And we are not under the law, like the Bible says. We're not under the instructions. We're under the instructor under the new covenant. But we need instructions. I need instructions. I need to know who I worship and how to worship Him. Because Yeshua said in John chapter 4, the hour has come, now is, when the true worshipers if Yeshua said there's true worship, that means there's false worship. And fortunately and unfortunately, there's only one God. So if there's only one God, there should only be one right way to worship God. And there's one way to be right, and there's a zillion ways to be wrong. So if we stand here and we begin to teach what is wrong, we'll be here for the rest, of, we'll be here for eternity. The Holy Spirit said to me many years ago, don't worry about what people are getting wrong. Share what is right. Share the way, the truth, and the life. Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. When he is lifted up, he said, I will draw everyone to myself. He is lifted up in this congregation. That's why he's here. That's why he loves this place. That's why the anointing is here in this place, because he is lifted up. That's why the adversary hates this place, because he is anti-Christo, he's anti-Christo, he's anti-anointing, he's anti-Christ. He doesn't want the Messiah raised, uh, to be lifted up in any congregation, because he doesn't want us to be drawn to him, because now we are to be drawn to Him. We are to be one with Him, the Bible says. We are to be in Him, the Bible, the Word of God says, as much as He is in us. He compared us to branches. He says, I'm the true vine. You're the branches. How many branches do you know that do well detach from the tree? That's most believers today. We talk about everything but and then we end up in dry places, like the Lord said about unclean spirits, seeking rest and finding no rest. 
the only place of rest for our souls is in the Father of Spirits. And he's telling us we can't visit him once a week on Sunday, and we can't just visit him one day a week on Shabbat on Saturday. He is in us, and he is with us, never to leave us or forsake us. For us now, the opportunity is to be cleaving onto him, as Moses said to the nation of Israel, and be attached to him all the time. Without him, he said, we can do nothing. So picture your life, everything you do, detach from God. Because how many know he doesn't take your free will away when you're born again? You have every right to leave God at home. Go to work without him. Drive without them, dress without them, do your laundry without them, dress without them, eat without them, go to sleep without them, wake up without them, as much as you want to. You can wave to them once every couple of weeks if you want. He's not leaving. He's not forsaken. But imagine a born-again believer that understands this concept and is a diligent seeker of God, doesn't want to do anything without him, doesn't want to wake up without him. Doesn't want to drive without him. Doesn't want to go to work without him. Completely attached to God, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what you face, always in him. I may know that that's a whole new experience. Because that's what literally the Bible says. He says, you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit. Once you're born of the Spirit, you need some spiritual classes. And Yeshua said to the Pharisees, to the religious leaders of his day, he said, if you say you can see, your sin still remains. You still don't understand. Why do you study the old ways? Because I need earthly representations of the things you and I cannot see. I need to know how the tabernacle was built. I need to know how the priests function. I need to know what it took for them to get into the Holy of Holies, to get into the presence of God. I need to know that only blood, the blood of goats and animals under the first covenant, could bring them into the Holy of Holies. And even if you wanted to do things in the old way, there's no temple. I feel sorry for the Orthodox Jews that reject Yeshua, that reject Jesus, because on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, they literally take chickens. And they bleed chickens, and they swing them around their heads and put blood on themselves because they know the Torah needs a blood atonement. I call that Jewish santeria. Because they know they need blood. And even if you had the blood of a goat or a or a ram, there's no temple where it would be accepted. The only way to worship now is in spirit and in truth. And you need to know how to worship. You need to know who to worship. People say, what are you going to teach on? Love God or die. What's the message? That you worship God. Let my people go, he said, that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may be attached to me, saith the Lord. And we now have this opportunity, the opportunity of a lifetime. And we're sidetracked with everything else. Not understanding of what it is that is available to each and every one of us. Because, praise God, if you're born again, you now have the Holy Spirit. He's not going anywhere. The Bible says now we are the temple. Why do you study the temple? Because we are the temple now of the Holy Spirit. Why do you study the old ways? I want to know how worship was in the old ways so I can now worship what I cannot see and who I cannot see. I need earthly examples so I can understand how to do these things. Are you with me? Somebody say, time to learn. 
So what did Paul mean when he said you're not under the law? What did he mean by that? Because if you're under the law, you're doing things in the old way. So we should throw the instructions out so we can be in the new way. No, under the new way, we're under the instructor. He will write his laws in our hearts and in our inward parts through the person of the Holy Spirit, the anointing. My sheep hear my voice, he said. A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from the voice of the stranger. Yeshua said in John 16, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will lead you into all truth. The gospel, Paul said, is not of men. It's not preached of men. As a matter of fact, we've got to go there. Holy Spirit says Galatians 1. Tougher to do stuff with one hand. I forgot how what freedom it is not to have hold the microphone. We'll get the microphones right. Chapter 1 and verse 6. The book of Galatians. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of the Mashiach of Christ unto another gospel which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ, of the Messiah. What Trevor said is there are people out there that call themselves Christians, but the the gospel has been perverted. In other words, they say they preach the gospel, but it's a perverted gospel. It's not the true gospel. It's not what came out of his mouth. It's not the way he walked. It's not the way he taught. It's perverted. We, most of us, are witnesses to this perversion that is going on today. Because the truth will set you free when we do things his way. But most people cannot tell between perversion and truth. Because most people are listening to the perverted gospel that is today. Many will come in my name, the Lord said. What is the sign of your coming, Lord, and of the end of the world? Take heed. He says to them, that no man deceive you, for many will come in my name, and many shall be deceived. Take heed. How's the deception coming? In his, in, through men. Who's going to do this? And they're going to do it in his name. Gabriel, that Messianic, that Mishkan place, you guys are teaching a different gospel. No, you're teaching a different gospel. This is the Yeshua gospel. This is the way Yeshua worshipped. This is the way Yeshua walked. This is the way he kept the commandments of his father. And he says to us, if you love me, if you love me, keep a man's commandments. He said, keep my commandments. So there's not another, verse 7, But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ or the Messiah. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be. Paul is tough. As we said before, verse 9, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you that you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men? Or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of the Messiah of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. So the gospel is not taught by men? How many know we've been saying that for weeks now? How was this gospel taught to us? Holy Spirit taught. God teaching us himself. Does it get better than that? It doesn't get better than that. But in order to be taught of God, you've got to know who God is. You've got to know how to worship him in spirit and in truth. You've got to know his voice. How many know that takes some instructions or 
oops commandments. I love this week's Torah portion. They don't even want to use the word commandments. Because so many people out there, so much of Christianity is anti-commandments. You are to order, it says in our calendars. No, it says you are to command. How many know when he commands, it's good. And when you and I command, it ain't so good. He tells the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 7, well has Isaiah said about you guys. What did Isaiah say 700 years before the Messiah? He said, you honor me with your lips, your heart is far from me, and you teach for doctrine the commandments of men. Anyone who says we don't have to keep God's commandments, what do you think they're going to teach? They're going to tell you not to keep God's commandments. Whose commandments? I mean, we serve a God of order. There has to be order. Things have to be done decently and in order. So we are not going to do God's commandments, but we're going to have church doctrine. And you must follow our rules and our regulations. And you must sign here to be a member. So you just threw out God's commandments and you're going to make your own commandments. No wonder the anointing is gone. No wonder the Holy Spirit is quenched. No wonder the Holy Spirit is grieved. No wonder there's no miracles. No wonder there's no power. Because he is not going to glorify your commandments and my commandments. He's going to glorify his commandments. The oil for the lamp was to light the way to the commandments of God. In the tabernacle. And in the Holy of Holies, in a golden ark with the mercy seat, and angels staring at each other as we have behind me here, inside were the commandments of God. That was the Holy of Holies, the inner sanctum of God. And God's very presence and God's glory was always glorifying His commandments. Rabbi Gabe, how come there's no glory in the church? How come there's no glory in even in Messianic congregations? Because I wish I could say that every Messianic congregation is anointed. But no, Messianic congregations are practicing Judaism, are practicing some kind of churchianity, and then there's no anointing. There's no glory. Because I don't care what you call yourself. It only matters what you do that he said. It said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Somebody said, how do I get some glory? you got to get some word in you. you got to get his commandments in you. You have to be led of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. When you're led of the Spirit, you're a child of God. If you're led by people, you're a religious cuckoo bird. Barking like dogs. Howling. We did that some of that last night, but we're allowed to do that once a year. We played Pentecostal last night. Or Charismaniacs. Can you imagine doing that every week? I got a headache. People were holding their ears. You're too loud, they said. You were silly. Can you imagine worshiping God like that every, every, every Shabbat? Silly. We get to be silly one day per year. They get to be silly every week. And then they wonder, how come there's no anointing? How come there's no Holy Spirit? How come there's no miracles? How come there's no glory? Because you're not doing things His way. Verse 11 again. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But, by what? Revelation. The revelation of who? Of him. Of Yeshua HaMashiach. Because that's who we're to be like. That's our predetermined destination. To be conformed into the image of his son. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care if you're not Jewish. You could be a Jamaican. You could be an Argentinian. You can be from Cuba. You could be Latino, you could be Japanese, I don't care. Every single one of us is to be conformed to the image of his son. And we're to be like him. And he's the promise. He's our predetermined destination. But what the Holy Spirit put on my heart for today is that 
just like Israel. Didn't they have to fight and war to get into their predetermined destination, which was the land of Israel? How many know this is serious business? How many know this is a spiritual war now? That's what the Bible teaches. And what the Holy Spirit put on my heart is, you got to fight. You have to fight hell itself in order to get, it, in order to connect with God. It's a serious fight. Because in the world, you're, you're competing with people. But in the kingdom of God, you're up against the adversary. You're up against someone who walks about as a roaring lion, the Bible says, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, he loves every other gospel. He loves when you and I don't even understand about being in the anointing and hooking up with God. He loves that. He's anti-anointing. He's anti-Christ. Are you with me? Hallelujah. The tabernacle last week, the people, the priest, the order of service, how to approach God. Only the high priest once a year was allowed to into the holies of holies. Would you say that's a privilege? One person, one day per year? I don't think, and I, I've brought this up many times, I don't think people realize the, the, uh, the, the blessing that's in our life, the privilege. Because under the first covenant, one man, the high priest, was only allowed to be in the anointing in the Holy of Holies. And now you and I are the tabernacle, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's in us and with us. And we now have access to the Holy of Holies. You would think that a born-again believer that understands that wouldn't be wasting their time out here all the time with nonsense, should I say? I mean, honestly, let's ask a question. You got someplace better to go as a born-again believer than the Holy of Holies? Oh, you don't understand. There's a, there's a beautiful mountain over there, and there's a beautiful lake, and there's a beautiful car, and there's a beautiful house. So? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what would you trade for your soul, the Lord says? Is there something better than being in the presence of God? Is there anything in this world better than that? You would think, wait, let me, Lord, let me, let me get this straight. I'm born again. You're in me. You're with me. Never to leave me or forsake me. I can now approach you because of the blood of Yeshua. I can now have access to the Holy of Holies. I can now be in you and with you all the time, but I'm busy with something else. I got places to go. I got people to see. I got things to do. You have nothing better to do. You have no better place to go. And the adversary would love to take you to other places. Somebody say, it's a war. It's a fight. I see people fighting. I see people fighting and warring all the time. Wasting their time. Because our battle is not against flesh and blood. People wasting their time with silly things. And wasting their time. And the adversary must be having a laughing attack. Watching the people who are anointed, that have the Holy Spirit, everywhere but the anointing. He must be having such a belly laugh. He must be laughing in our faces. We can't even see him. He could be right in front of your eyes. Laughing at you and I. I got you. I'm anti-anointing and you don't even realize it. I got you thinking about everything else but God. I got you doing things separated from God. I see you as a branch detached from the true vine. I got gotcha. you. 
How does he come? How does he steal, kill, and destroy? Somebody say it's a fight. The priesthood. There were priests, there were ministers, all these things, all, all these earthly things. Why do you study these things? Go with me to Hebrews chapter 9. We'll find out why we study these things and why there's revelation. I mean, Yeshua fulfilled everything or is fulfilling everything that is in the first covenant. He said, do not even think that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come to fulfill everything. So let's say you fulfill the commandments of God. I, I, you convinced me, Rabbi Gabe, I'm not anti-commandments. I want to do some commandments. If you fulfill the commandments the way he fulfilled them, you would be like who? Rabbi Levi? Pastor Bob? Pastor Mickey? Rabbi Mickey? So if the commandments of God were to be placed in you properly the way God would want to put them in you and I, we would be like who? If you would fulfill the law and the prophets the way he did, we would be like who? You get it? So how do I know if I'm on the right track? Not if you're barking like a dog. If you're not like him, you're on, a, you're on the wrong path. And how many know Yeshua said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And only a few that find it. Does that mean it's not available? Or we just can't seem to figure it out? I've, I've been accused of, you're too Jesus conscious. You always talk about him. I'm like, you got a better way? You have a better truth? You have a better doctrine than the king of righteousness? Than the way, the truth, and the life? You have some better way? I don't. Chapter 9 in the book of Hebrews, verse 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Why did God tell Moses to build a worldly sanctuary? Because he said, these things are the heavenly patterns. I want you to do exactly as I say, Moses. Because these things are going to stand for heavenly patterns, spiritual things, things you cannot see. Because if you don't get it in the physical, they'll never get it in the spiritual. For there was a tabernacle. There was a mishkan. The word mishkan means tabernacle. There was a tabernacle made, verse 2, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. Last week we were studying how to put the building together or the tabernacle together. This week is the priestly instructions of the priest on how to minister in this tabernacle in the wilderness. And after the second veil, verse 3, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, Verse 4, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had mana and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant, meaning the Ten Commandments, and over it the cherubims of glory, as you see behind me here, shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest, which we're studying this week, went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God. Aaron's sons. Aaron was the high priest, the original high priest. But into the second, verse 7, went the high priest, as I said earlier, alone once every year. So under the new covenant, we should go to the holiest of all once a year. Like them. No. We now have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Our, our bodies, our, our earthly bodies, our earthly vessels, our physical temples are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
what they could only have, what one person can only have one day per year, you and I now have access to, wait, 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 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I hear people say, God woke me up at three in the morning. Was he there? He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. You mean he's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the holiest of the holiest of the holy, the holy of holies is available to us now? Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm busy. I got better things to do. I got better places to go. I'm like, when I realize that I now have access to God, that only the high priest, because as a Jewish person, I can appreciate that. Maybe you don't have a Jewish background. You may not appreciate that. But I can appreciate that when I read that in the Torah, that one man, one person, one high priest had access to the Holy of Holies one day per year, and everybody else stood outside and had to fast. No soup for you. I said, Lord, why did you, why did you, why, how come everyone was outside and only one person, and you made them fast? And the Holy Spirit put this on my heart. Maybe this bears witness in your spirit. I began to teach them that I wanted them to believe that I am, even though they could not see me. He wanted them to even start learning about one person would be a witness, the high priest, that there really was a God. He would come out and go, hey guys, there really is a God. You saw him? Oh, I saw the glory. He was really in there? He is. We believe that he is. And now we realize that he rewards those that diligently seek him. Because one person was a witness and the rest had to believe him. Now Yeshua says, you are my witnesses. Not Jehovah witnesses, Jesus witnesses. You are my witness. How many know Moses was a Jehovah witness? Because Moses knew him as Jehovah. You don't know him as Jehovah. You don't know him as Jehovah. Moses knew him as Jehovah. Moses was a Jehovah witness. Yeshua said, you are my witness. Where are Yeshua witness? Oh, I'm starting a new, not a cult. I will say, well, I'm a, where were Yeshua witnesses? Somebody comes knocking on your door, where's Jehovah witnesses? Where are Yeshua witnesses? <laughs> Come on in. Unless you're Moses, you ain't no witness at all. You are my witnesses. But into the second, verse 7, went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins or the errors of the people. Verse 8, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. This signifying what under the first covenant? What was not made manifest, what was not available to us, what was not available to them, the holiest of all was not available. Somebody say, is the holiest of all available now? You would think we would take advantage of that. I remember days going by. I didn't even realize. I wasn't even seeking the Lord. I was sidetracked with every wind of doctrine or every care. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word. We're sidetracked instead of going to the Holy of Holies and being there and fighting to be in there. No, we're fighting this person. We're fighting for that. We're fighting for this. God said, I don't want you fighting for those things. I want you to seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, my righteousness. I figured out the only way I could be right is when I'm in the presence of God. Everything else is self-righteousness. That's how you know when somebody's religious. The Lord said, you will know them by their fruit. 
Oh, if you understand the Holy of Holies and how it's accessible and how you can get there and how you can be there, the anointing will rub all over you. You'll wake up one day and you'll have what is known in Galatians 5 as the fruit of the Spirit. Yeshua said, you're the branches. You cannot bear fruit of yourself. In other words, the only way you can get the fruit of the Spirit is being a branch that's in the Spirit. You can't talk yourself into it. You can't produce yourself. This fruit is only gotten by your faith, by being attached to God, by taking advantage and understanding, because he said, my people perish, how? We're talking about everything else but that? I've heard people say, when are you going to teach meat? I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. It don't get meatier than this. It don't get deeper than this. It doesn't get better than this. In his presence, his fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And without him, you and I can do nothing. If that ain't meat, you would know a steak if you tripped over it. You've been in that perverted gospel too long. You're a pervert <laughs> of the gospel. Because I know, but being in the Holy of Holies, I don't have to worry about anything. In him, there's no darkness. As a matter of fact, when you're in the presence of God, I've noticed the adversary can't even talk to you. It's quiet. I'm like, why is it quiet in your presence, Lord? Because the devil was kicked out of heaven. He has no access to the anointing. That's why he's anti-anointing. When you're in the flesh, you can hear him pretty good. When you're in the spirit, it's like putting on earmuffs it's quiet it's peaceful psalm 91 doesn't it say that keep your finger in hebrews 9 he that dwelleth he that dwelleth oh i visit god on a regular basis that's why your branch is a little. You got that little freak going on. You got them Bing cherries. Somebody say, I want large pineapples, sandia. I want watermelon. I want huge pomegranates, grapefruits, large oranges. You got, you got little grapes going on in your branches. See? And they look like raisins. He that dwells in the secret place. Now, honestly, if we didn't know about the Holy of Holies, how would you even know about the secret place? Because it wasn't made manifest according to Hebrews chapter 9. Now we talk about it freely. Why do we talk about it freely? Because we study the stuff, data. We get good data. We got good information. We now know the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, verse 2, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Verse 2 says that if you fear, if you're afraid, if you're afraid of, if you're a nervous chalea, you ain't abiding in the secret place of the Most High. My nerves have calmed down completely. Why? 
because I found, I, I found the secret place of the Most High. My soul is at rest when I'm in Him. I ain't nervous about anything or anybody. Are you with me? It is a peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't need to take tranquilizers. People that, you know, they say they have the anointing, their handshakes. You ain't in the spirit. My hand don't shake in the spirit. I'm like, <laughs> still waters, baby. Green pasture. When it's like this, I've seen people that are anointed. No, when I'm in the secret place of the Most High, I'm like, ah, ain't no shaking going on. It's like, found rest for my soul you know a peaceful soul a peaceful spirit makes a healthy body you know why stress kills in case you didn't know that how many people say stress kills where can I get away from stress in the secret place of the most high Surely, verse 3, he shall deliver you. From who? From the snare of the family. You know, the adversary has all these little tricks up his sleeve. And from what? The noisome? You mean it's quiet? You mean the devil has to shut up? He can't reach you in the anointing. He has no access what does the Bible say? I beheld Satan fall from heaven. What does it say in Ephesians 2? We have been raised up to sit where? In heavenly places, even though we were dead in our trespasses and in our sins. Can I have some instructions? So where he raised me up, I could stay and abide there. I can learn how to do this. Am I under the law? No, you're way above it. The law lifted you up into the Holy of Holies. The law taught you how to be in the Holy of Holies. The instructions, the commandments of God taught you who God is. Father is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit. In spirit and in truth. He'll deliver you from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence. Good for pestilences? Good for virus? We just found a vaccine. We just found the Corona Protector. How many know these are diseases and pestilences? How do I, how do I protect myself? Because how many people say, I, I need to get a vaccine? Well, the thing already transformed, or what's it called? It mutated. They're playing whack-a-mole now. They're already on the third vaccine now. <laughs> By the time they're done, we're going to look like a pincushion. It, it mutated again. You need another the shot. Which arm? The right arm? I, got, I already got a bunch of it. Try this arm now. I'm making light of it, but it's true. How many know that if you don't have the Lord and you're not in the anointing, you're vulnerable to everything, spiritual and physical? 
You're, 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 you're vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. But in the anointing, are you talking something? I don't think Yeshua even had a cold. The Messiah can't come out tonight. The anointed one can't come out tonight because he's got the fever. He's a little under the weather. At least we've canceled all his appointments. He's got a migraine. Did he not get sick even once? Did the anointed one touch people with fever? And what happened to the fever? You mean the anointing is the antidote to all the diseases? You mean I'm protected not only spiritually but physically when I'm in God? I'm He's my shield, as he told Abraham. He's my high reward. Does this really work? The only way to find out is if you try it. I've noticed that when I, when I drift away from God, I get stuff on me. The, when I'm in God, all of a sudden I'm out of God. I this, that, all of a sudden. I got the sniffles. My throat hurts. I think I'm coming down with something, honey. Let me take a vitamin C and get in the secret place of the Most High. It's gone. It left. I remember this person had a high fever, was here. Very high fever. He was burning up. I'm walking in the anointing. I'm trying this. I'm, I'm like practicing what I'm preaching. I'm like, let me try that Jesus thing. And I touched him and I said, fever leave. All of a sudden it was, fever's gone. Even he touched lepers. He Was he afraid of leprosy? Everyone was afraid of leper. Was he afraid of leprosy? Was he afraid of anything? He was afraid of nothing. He walked in this world. He says, be of good cheer. In the world you will have. Be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome. Lord, how did you overcome the world? In the Holy of Holies. In the secret place of the Most High. What are you doing, Gabriel? I can't tell you. It's secret. You wouldn't understand if I told you anyway. Because if you don't even understand earthly things, how are you going to understand heavenly things? Isn't that what Yeshua told Nicodemus? Nicodemus was a rabbi. Can a man enter into his mother's womb and be born again, he tells them? Yeah, try it, Nicodemus. <laughs> Go find your mother and tell her you're going to do that. See how she likes it. She didn't like it the first time. <laughs> didn't have a clue. How many know if you don't know what you're talking about? Can't do what you don't understand. Can't be where you don't know. Can't know if it's secret. Somebody say, I know the secret place of the Most High. I now know, I now know the Holy of Holies. I now know how to have access. I, know, I now know how to fight. To reach my predetermined destination. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, verse 5, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, because... You have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague.
come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They shall, they shall bear you up in their hands unless you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet because he has set his love upon me. Verse 14. What is the first and great commandment? Every week, Shema Israel Adonai. You people are crazy. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the most important commandment in the Bible, what Yeshua Jesus said is the first and great commandment. If you ain't preaching that, you ain't preaching nothing. Because he has set his love upon me. Somebody say, time to love God. Time to be in God. Time to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. There's some pestilences. There's some diseases. There's some plagues. There's some stuff that goes bump in the night. We are up against some scary stuff. Where do I run to? Where do I go? Wait, I got to do, do my secret place walk. What you doing, Gabriel? Can't tell you, secret. You're not afraid? You feel pretty good? You're not on any medication? I went for a physical the other day, remember? They said, list all the drugs you're on. My brother says, you got to go for a checkup. You're 66 years old. I said, I don't even have a primary physician. I have Medicare. He says, I'll get you a primary physician. He's a good friend of mine. Okay, I'll go. Again, blood, this, that, take everything. And I'm like, we'll call you with the lab results. Ring, hello. Gabriel, this is your doctor. Hey, doctor. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa for you? We got your lab work back and cholesterol is fine, your blood pressure is fine, your urine is fine, your sugar is fine. No cholesterol? No. Can I have the number? 140 cholesterol. But I recommend you take a statin just to make sure. Statin? What is that? You just said my cholesterol's fine. He goes, I've been on it for years. I said, you look it. <laughs> I said, doctor, I'm not on any medication. And I'm not planning on starting any either. I have the great physician. I have the secret place of the most high. You know, that would really serve the medic that would really solve the Medicare problem in this country if people knew how to abide in the Holy of Holies. You know how much money we we spend the most money on on on, on medical what do they call that? On on no, not pharmaceutical, school, just medical in general. We spend millions of health care, that's the word. We spend so much on health care and we're the sickest nation on the planet. We also have something important. We're the number one economy in the world. So we have one problem in this country. We have the most money. So what does everybody chase in America, the, 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 the head of capitalism of the world? Everybody chases what? You mean that's crept into the churches, Trevor? The prosperity gospel? Talking about money? Money come to me? You know, somebody said if you have a real fat wallet in your back pocket and you sit on it long enough, you will develop back problems.
Somebody say, all the money in the world cannot protect you from everything that can hurt you. Everything that can kill you, everything that can make you sick, everything that can make you depressed. But I know something that can heal everything and anyone of anything, anytime, any place, anywhere. When you're ready to do business with God. Somebody say, when you're ready to do business with God. A thousand shall fall at your side, verse 7, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he should give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him. Show him my salvation. Show him my Yeshua. You look at the Hebrew word there, that's Yeshua. I'll show you. How many know we serve a God that shows? How many know we serve a God that does? How many know we serve a God that's yes and amen? If you do what he says, he's obligated to do what he promised. You don't have to force his hand. It's his pleasure to give you the anointing, the Bible says. It's his pleasure to give you the Holy Spirit. It's his pleasure when you even show up. Are you with me? Baruch Hashem. Isaiah 61. We've got to go over time. The Lord said, I can't close yet. I remember in the first few years when I started teaching, I was so nervous. I got to the point where I would just, the Holy Spirit would give me scripture after scripture after, usually about seven to ten scriptures, and I would go in line. And I was looking at the clock. And I left out three scriptures for time's sake. And when I got home and I was in prayer and I was in the spirit, the Holy Spirit said to me, you left out three scriptures. I said, Lord, it got late. People would get hungry. People get frustrated. He says, you, he says I couldn't minister to certain people that were there because you left out three scriptures. So I finish when he says to finish. And everyone thinks I'm speaking to them. And you want to know something? He is speaking to you personally today. This is a personal message for everyone that is here today, myself included. Because I like that secret place of the Most High. I want to be in that place all the time. I want to take advantage of that. I don't want to mess with the adversary. I don't want him pulling me out. That's when my, my throat hurts. That's when I get the coughs. That's when my pressure goes up. I, I, don't, I don't want to take those diuretics either. You're always going to the bathroom with those things. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. 
and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, but you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the nations of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourself. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be to them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed, verse 9, shall be known among the nations, among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Verse 10 tells us about the priestly garments that are in this week's Torah portion. God dressed the priest specifically when they would approach him because there is such thing as spiritual clothing that we must have in order to fight to be in the Holy of Holies, to be in the anointing. Somebody say this is a fight. Who am I fighting against? My mother-in-law? My boss? For the earth brings forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Ephesians 6. We're not done yet. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, I need spiritual garb. They needed earthly garb. How can you speak about spiritual garb if we didn't have earthly garb? Earthly garments for the priest, for those that ministered unto God. Are you with me? Somebody say, time to, time to put on spiritual armor, as the Bible says. And guess who's going to put it on you? Can't even dress yourself. I guess the high priest would just go like this and stand there, and they would put the stuff on him. The hat, the miter, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate. Oh, my God, you mean you were dressing them earthily because you were going to dress us spiritually and we would understand these things? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong of the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against who? The wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, verse 12, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt with, bout with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. In other words, be in the anointing and be interceding constantly for other people. Be in the presence of God and pray for people. Walk in the anointing, pray for people. How does it work like that? That's when Job's life turned around. That's when you're hitting on all cylinders in the kingdom of God. That's when things are working. And that's when things are not working. Hallelujah. Now i got to find the book of Job where it says that. Go with me to the book of Job and verse 10, chapter 42 and verse 10 in the book of Job. Notice what happens when you walk in the anointing and you love God with all your heart and you're in the Holy of Holies and in the secret place and you're not seeking that place for yourself, you're seeking that place for other people. Notice what happens to your life. Look what happened to Job here in chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when... 
when he prayed, not for himself, but for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. When the Job's captivity was over, when he got in the anointing and he started praying for everybody else. Not for himself. You don't give him the anointing. God, send me. God, give me. No, Lord, I'm in the anointing because I'm interceding for my brother who's not saved. Lord, I'm in the anointing because I have friends and I have, and I have co-workers and I have neighbors that do not know you, Lord. And it's not, it's not in your heart that any should perish. It's not in my heart that any should perish. And I'm praying for this one who's ill, who this one who has a disease, who this one is tormented by demons. I'm praying for this one. I'm, I lift this person up to you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. I lift this person up to you in the name of Yeshua. I'm in the anointing. You, I'm a priest now. I, I'm a priest for you, Lord. I intercede for other people in the presence of God. And let me pray for other people. And then you're going to turn around my captivity because I was living for myself only, me, myself, and I. Now I live for you, Lord, and I live to pray for others. I don't even pray for myself anymore. I don't even ask for stuff. Blessings will overtake you when you live this way. You'll be the head and not the tail. All the diseases the Lord said that I put on the Egyptians, I'll take them off you. You're not going to be diseased. You're not going to be depressed. You're not going to be oppressed. You just abide in the secret place of the Most High. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody say, I'm ready to do business with God. When you're ready to do business with God, he'll be ready to do business with you. Oh, I got a scripture here. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. We're going to close with this. First close. I like this microphone. Miss Spiritu Santo. We're talking about the Spiritu Santo. I just became a Catholic. That was a Jewish star. And the disciples came and said to him, Matthew 13 and 10, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. For in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which saith, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, shall not perceive. For this people's heart, verse 15, is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted or changed, and I should heal them. Somebody say, time to do business with God. Anytime you're ready to open your eyes, open your ears, get with the Yeshua program. Somebody say, you got the Yeshua program here? Do you know any better program? If you do business with Yeshua, he will change you and he will heal you. That's what he said. God is not a liar or the son of man that he should lie or he should have to repent. His yeses are yes and his noes are no. When you're ready to do business with God, let's stand up and honor him, please. Amen. Somebody say, I'm ready to do business with God. When I came in through those doors, I was ready to do business with God. Because I was busted and disgusted, sick. I was physically sick when I came in here. 
I was spiritually destroyed. And the devil kept saying, like Gerson, you, you, you were giving that, he was saying, kill yourself. See, when you're down like that, that's when the devil can tell you to kill yourself. And I bet everyone here, the devil told you to kill yourself when you were down. End it! Thank God Yeshua found me. Thank God he came into my life. Thank God he's in me and with me, never to leave me or forsake me. Thank God that the same anointing that was on him is now on my life and your life. And that the Holy of Holies, the secret place of the Most High, is now available, is now accessible by the blood of the Lamb. And we can overcome him, the adversary, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. And we don't even love our own lives, even to the death. I care about God now, and I care about other people that don't know God. That's, what I, that's all I care about now. Like Paul said, my Jewish brethren in the flesh, I wish I could say or do something so they can be saved. Anybody who's ever willing. I mean, how many know this is good news? Is this the best news? Does it really work? It works when you do it His way. His truth and His life. He will change you. And He will heal you. I am a witness. I'm a Yeshua witness. We're going to start that, Gerson. Yeshua witnesses. Jesus witnesses. We'll go right behind the Jehovah witnesses. We'll go. Jesus witnesses. What have you witnessed? I witnessed change. I witnessed the way. I witnessed truth. I witnessed the life. I wish, I, I've, I've witnessed healing. I've, wit I've witnessed restoration. Somebody said, I've witnessed restoration here. God has restored me. God is restoring me. He who started a good work in us will complete it. He don't give up on us. We give up on him, silly rabbit. Somebody say, I'm ready to do business with God. Serious business. How many know this life is serious business? How many know there's some stuff out there? And have you noticed it's getting worse? And the worse it gets out there, the more you need to be in him. Are you with me? Somebody say, I need divine protection. I need divine provision. Where do you get that? In the secret place of the Most High. Where is it? What are you doing, Gabriel? It's a secret. Doesn't it say walk in the Spirit? How many of you exercise and actually walk? Next time you walk, walk like that. Walk in the Spirit. Exercise your muscles and exercise your spirit. Walk a little faster, you know, like... Act like you're jogging. What are you doing? Secret. If I told you, you wouldn't understand. Somebody say, I understand. I know, this, I know the secret place of the Most High. He's in me. He's with me. Never to leave me or forsake me. Baruch Hashem. He is the Lord that heals us. I'm a Yeshua witness. Somebody say, I'm a Yeshua witness. You will see my Yeshua, it says. You will see my salvation. Somebody say, I'm ready to see some salvation in my life. Somebody say, I've already seen some salvations in my life. 
Hallelujah. Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, we praise you. We thank you. Bless your holy name. Thank you for the Mishkan. Thank you for the tabernacle of David. Thank you for sending people that, that have a heart for you, Lord. That are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And thank you, Father in heaven, for filling us with the anointing, with the oil of gladness. Father God, raise up wise virgins in these last days that have their vessels filled with oil. The oil of the Holy Spirit. Wise virgins whose lamps are trimmed and ready for the coming of Messiah Yeshua. Father God, use us mightily in these last days to touch other people, to pray for other people, to intercede for other people, to seek your face and seek their salvations and their healings and all of the things that you have for them. Use us mightily, Lord, as a conduit, as a branch abiding in you. Let your anointing, let rivers of living waters flow from our bellies. Let your Holy Spirit flow from within us, Lord, as we seek your face, as we diligently seek you, as you not only reward us, but that you touch others through us, through the anointing, through the Holy Spirit. Touch people around us. Let our shadow walk by like Peter, and people would be healed. Touch them, Father. Heal them. Let them know that you're in us and that you're with us through the person of the Holy Spirit. Not just words, but demonstration of power and the Holy Spirit. Touch people through us supernaturally. Let them know that you're in us and with us. Show them through us. Give us boldness, Father, in heaven. Give us the right words. Give us revelation about their lives. Speak through us, Lord, to them. Touch them. Draw them to yourself as you have done for each and every one of us. We lift up family members. We lift up friends. We lift up co-workers. We lift up our neighbors. We lift up and even pray for our enemies today. Father God, touch them through us words through us and Holy Spirit through us. Let us be vessels of honor in the last days, Lord, that we would turn many to righteousness and your word says that we would shine brightly as the stars for you, Lord. And we pray this in the name above every name, the name Yeshua HaMashiach, the world knows him as Jesus the Christ, his name we pray and the people of God said. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Shabbat shalom. Thank you for watching on the internet. We're going to close in worship. Not the bedtime shema. I got to do the ironic thing. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your presence is a new wine and oil, and in your presence is where I want to be. Father, draw me, draw me near to where you are. In your presence.
Rabbi Gabe is going to dismiss us with the ironic benediction. In the meantime, I'd just like to encourage you to stay, break bread with one another, have a cup of soup, and share a word of encouragement, uh, seeing as uh, it's awfully cold out there. How about sharing some of the warmth, okay? Um, God bless you. We want to wish you a Shavua Nehedar. Have a wonderful week. And thank you to all the people who volunteer their time, their efforts, and their love in the service of the Mishkan. We thank you so much. Thank you for those of you who donate also uh, financially. We certainly appreciate all of your help. Believe me, we are grateful. And God bless you all. We will see you next Friday night. We hope you'll join us so we can wish you a Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Panin El Panin face to face. God bless you. Thank you, honey. We're going to close what is known as the Aaronic Benediction, found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. First in Hebrew, then in English. Shalom. The Lord Yeshua bless you and keep you. The Lord Yeshua make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord Yeshua lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Basham Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a big hand again. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on the internet. Please stay and eat something.